This is problem number four on the sample test problems for test number one. Graph below shows a function which expresses Newton's distance from the starting line in miles as a function of the number of hours x he raced. A, what is the significance of the y-intercept in the context of this problem? So the y-intercept intercept in this case is 0, 1. 0 is the time since the race started. And 1 is distance from the starting line. So what this means, unfortunately for Newton's competitors, is that at the start of the race, Newton was one mile from the starting line. So whether he cheated or was just given a head start out of deference, uh, we'll leave that to you to interpret. We move on to B. What was Newton's average speed over the whole 10 hours of the race? Include units. Okay, so we're just going to use our little formula here. We know that the average velocity, average speed, is change in distance over change in time. So that means we're looking for subtracting some stuff up here and divide, subtract some stuff down below. So over the whole 10 hours, that means we want to know between 0 and 10, and then the same numbers go downstairs without the function. So looking at the picture, f of 10, we're going to get right up here. So that's the end of the race. After 10 hours, Newton was 5 miles from the starting line. So this is 5 minus, and then f of 0 is from this point right here. After zero hours, Newton was one mile from the start line. So that's a one divided by 10 minus zero is 10. So that means that Newton covered four miles in 10 hours. So you can leave it as a fraction. You can reduce the fraction. You can write it as a decimal, uh, but do include units. Upstairs was miles, downstairs was hours. So Newton traveled at 0.4 miles per hour. Part C, which of the following three quantities is largest and which is smallest? Explain f prime of 5, f of 5 minus f of 0 divided by 5 minus 0, the average rate of change of f between x equals 5 and x equals 10. So what we're supposed to do is come up with some way to see each of those three quantities on the graph up above. So let's start with the first one, f prime of 5. So we know the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So that derivative is the slope of the tangent line when t is 5. So we'll go right here to t equals 5, and we'll put a dot. And then we're just going to eyeball a tangent line. So just draw your best approximation for a tangent line at that point. And once you've got that drawn, we're going to find the slope of the tangent line, literally by counting boxes. So uh, we're just going to pick two points that look like they're near the grid someplace. Um, so I guess we'll say this point over here is close enough to the grid. There's another point that's close enough to the grid, and so we're going to count uh, rise over run. So we rose one, we ran two, so the slope is just one half. So ballpark, I'm going to say that's around a half. Half a mile an hour was roughly his uh, instantaneous velocity when t was five hours. Okay, the second one, f of five minus f of zero divided by five minus zero. So that sounds like an average velocity calculation between t equals 5 and t equals 0. So we'll put dots at those two points. For t equals 5, we've already got that one. t equals 0 is over here. And the average velocity just represents the slope of a secant line. So I've got a secant line there. And just looking at the blue line slope and the green line slope, hopefully we can pick which one we think is bigger. Uh, and it seems like the green is going to be a steeper line than the blue. So at the moment, we've got the green is bigger than blue. And then finally, the last one, the average rate of change of f between x equals 5 and x equals 10. So that's quite similar to part 2, uh, just written out instead of given, it, given to you in symbols. So we're going to draw another secant line connecting the 5 and the 10. So let's grab these two points. So the 5 is very popular. The 10 is up here. And we want to draw a secant line that connects those two things 
kind of tough to see because it's so close to the actual curve. But anyway, I think that the slope of that line is the answer to part three. So we're supposed to try to order these, and it's challenging because the slopes are kind of all similar to each other. So we really do have to kind of reason through. So uh, let's translate everything into average velocities and then see if we can't piece it together from there. So first part we said was uh, the instantaneous velocity at t equals 5 hours. Second part is the average velocity between t equals 0 and t equals 5. And then the last part's already written. It's average velocity between 5 and 10. So looking at the graph, we know that Newton was speeding up the whole time because this graph is increasing the whole time. And uh, so that means that uh, his speed at t equals 5, the instantaneous speed, must have been bigger than his average velocity for the first five hours. So I think we've got so far that f prime of 5 is definitely more than this second example here, f of 0, 5 minus 0. And all we have to do is then compare the last part. So we want his average speed between 5 and 10 hours compared to his instantaneous speed at five hours. So because he's speeding up the whole time, I know that between five and 10 hours, he's going faster and faster and faster. And in particular, that whole time, he's going faster than he was at uh, t equals five. So I think that the biggest number in this collection is his average velocity from five to 10 hours. So that must be less than, okay, we'll just abbreviate part three. So largest one is part three. Smallest one is part two. Okay, and then finally, part D, estimate how fast Newton was shambling when x equals eight. Show how you calculated it. So we actually did something quite similar to this uh, when we did the previous question, but uh, all we're looking at is uh, time t equals eight. So we'll try to put one more color dot here. We'll make this one red. And how fast he was going is just the slope of the tangent line that hits that point. And so we draw our best approximation of a tangent line. And then we try to read something through all this mess of lines. So the only one I care about right now is the red one. So we're looking for two points that are kind of on the, on the red line and near the grid. So for example, we could pick uh, this point up here and maybe that point right in there. And then again, literally counting boxes. So we'll draw our triangle here. The rise in this case is two, the run is three. So roughly his speed at that one moment in time was 2 over 3, rise over run. And that's going to be 2 thirds of a mile per hour. Again, there's lots of tolerance for um, uh, error, I guess, in that number. Every time we just draw a tangent line, we're just eyeballing things, so there's a wide range of answers, and I'm betting if you look in the answer key, it says something different, but hopefully close to two-thirds of a mile per hour.